This is Flappy Boyd, Chapter 8, Player Death. We have one simple thing that's going to cause the player to die and the game to stop, and that's a collision between our bird and any of the pipes. Since a collision is when two entities touch, we have to think about what's the simplest way to do this. We could sense the collision from each of the pipes, or we could sense it from the ball side, because the ball is always going to collide with one of these pipes. Since there are eight pipes and only one player, it's a lot simpler to detect collisions from this side. So I'm going to go to a new section of my flow graph here. And the primary thing I'm here to do is detect collisions. Again, if you have no idea where to look here, just type the word to do know, collision, and you're going to find a collision listener in the physics group. And I'm going to go ahead and drag that onto there. You should know by now that these red inputs are integers, and that's because collision listener needs an entity ID. It needs to know whose entity's collisions you want it to listen for. And of course, that's going to be our flappy. So I'm going to select that. I need to get its entity ID. So that's going to be my entity info. I'm going to feed that into there. I only need to ask this question once. It's not like the entity ID is going to change. So that's why I'm using entity info instead of entity ID. And I'm going to add a start node. So on game start, I'm going to go ahead and get this entity ID and feed it to the collision listener. And then I can do this from either A or B, the first or the second colliding entity. I need to do something about this. In this case, I'm going to set a game token. I'm just going to create a variable that I can listen to globally from any of my flow graphs or any part of my flow graph and react to it. And there are going to be many stages of this reaction. The ball should stop being able to jump, the pipe should stop moving, and I'm going to jump over to my game over camera. So let's go back to our database, make this a bit wider, add a new game token, and this is simply going to be a true false. Am I or am I not dead? So I'm going to call it boo is dead. I just suggest that your game token name makes it clear what kind of data you expect to be working with. It saves you a lot of troubleshooting. And I don't need to change this now because the default is Boolean, so I'm done creating my game token. And all I'm going to do is just set its value. We've already used game token set, so I'm going to do a quick search for it with the Q key. And I'm going to trigger this when either entity involved in the collision triggers this. And of course, the token I'm going to change is my boo is dead. You'll notice that these game tokens are attached to the level. There's also something called a graph token, which is just within flow graph, if you just need a variable within flow graph. And the value I want to set is simply going to be true. That's all I have to do for sensing the collision. What I'm going to do elsewhere is constantly listen to the value of this game token. I'm going to monitor it every frame of the game. And as soon as that becomes true, I'm going to go ahead and react to it. So now that I have that variable, let's deal with one thing at a time. I'm going to start with this first flow graph. I don't want the player to continue to be able to jump if they're dead. So I'm going to disable this action listener when boo is dead is equal to true. What I need to do is go back to my mission folder where the game tokens are and simply monitor the value of my boo is dead game token. So the token I'm listening for is boo is dead. I want to compare it to true. Is it true that boo is dead? And if it equals that, I'm going to disable the jump. And I can save some system resources here by telling it not to check every frame per se, but only fire if the result changes. Save, full screen, and test. I'm going to jump for a little bit, and then I'm going to deliberately collide with a pipe. And I'm hitting the jump key, hitting the jump key, and I can no longer jump. And then gravity goes ahead and pushes me down. So uh, my player has died. Next thing is, I don't want the camera to continue following the player on death. I'm going to let the player fall out of the camera view. So I'm going to stop this on Boo is Dead. And since I already have one of these listeners, I'm going to go ahead and copy it. So I'm selecting, choosing Control C for copy. And I'm going to paste it over here, but without links. Same kind of monitoring, same question, am I dead, am I dead, am I dead? And when that's true, 
I'm going to go ahead and stop the camera from moving any further. Save, full screen, test. Camera's moving, following my player again, and then I'm going to die. And jump, 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 I can't do it. And it's not working. So let's see if we can figure out why. Let's think through this camera follows player flow graph very carefully. The bird moves. The current position of the bird is fed to this and offset. That's fed to the Move Entity 2 node as the position for Flappy Cam to move to, and it also starts it moving. And the whole key to this is to remember that Flappy is always moving. Gravity is either pushing it down or the player is pushing it up with the jump key. So even though this said, hey, stop your movement, new positional data is constantly being fed to this, and a new move is being started. So I not only have to stop the movement that's in progress, I also have to interrupt new movements from happening. So I need to insert a logic gate in here. So I'm going to go to the logic folder. A logic gate is just like a door that I can open and close at will. And I'm going to move this thing and force it to pass from the in to the out so that I can choose to open the door or close the door as necessary. So my logic is still going through here right now. I haven't closed the door, except on death, then I'm going to go ahead and say, nope, you can't do this anymore. So let's try that, see how it works. Jump, 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 camera's moving, camera's moving, and now I'm going to collide. And Flappy falls, and I'm still jumping. Flappy falls out of frame. I can't jump anymore. Everything's working perfectly. Good time to add some comments to make this clear, because this starts to get a little bit tricky. The last thing we need to do is stop the pipes from continuing to move. I'm going to save. I'm going to go back here and copy this game token node because it's listening for Boo is Dead, which is exactly what I need here. And the same kind of thing here. I'm going to stop this move entity to whenever the player dies. So I'm just going to paste. And when this is equal, I'm going to stop that. I don't have to worry about stopping new movements from happening because this is only initiated once during this loop. Let's test it on pipe number one, and if it works, we'll paste it to the other three pipes. Collide, and the pipe stops. So I'm going to copy this node, paste it to here. Remember the Control V or Paste is actually paste with links, and even though it's a different graph, it has one of these Move Entity 2 nodes, so it's able to preserve this connecting line that came from the other flow graph. Paste. And one more time. Let's do a full test. And this would be a good time to use the debug camera to make sure that all the pipes stop, but I'm just going to assume that they do. Because if they didn't, eventually they reappear on the right hand side of the screen and keep moving. Can't jump, pipes don't move. The next thing I want to do is actually switch cameras so that we can see our game over text, this view here. We've already created a camera. We look in our cameras layer here. We have this game over camera. So all I want to do is enable that camera when the player dies. So again, I'm going to take a copy of this game token node here that's listening for Boo is Dead and copy it. And I'm going to create a section here which is going to become everything that I do when I die that isn't sort of self-contained. I'm going to go ahead and paste that node in there. And of course, I want to do a camera view, the same thing that I did to en enable our camera on Game Start right here. I could just copy one of these, paste it over here without links. And then I'm going to assign my game over camera, which is hiding here. And when boo is dead equals true, I'm going to enable that. Now the only thing is this is going to happen instantly, and you'll see if we test that as soon as I collide, boom, game over instantly, which is okay. You may dig it that way, but I'm going to choose to do it a little differently. I'm just going to simply insert a delay, and that is one of the last shortcuts I haven't showed you on this particular menu here. Right-click on the connector menu here and insert time delay as a node. This is purely seconds. So this will just give me a little bit of time to actually see that Flappy falls, and then boom, we switch cameras.
And that's it for Chapter 8, Player Death.